Companies around the globe are racing to develop augmented reality, or AR, spending a fortune betting that the way users interact with digital content is going to change. I've come to Snap's London office, that's the company that gave the world Snapchat, to get a sneak peek at their latest AR glasses. What we're showing you here today is uh, Snap's new spectacles. And so this is a completely untethered spatial computing um, device. So it has um, processors to understand the world uh, around you, cameras to see both the world around you and the hands around you, and uh, an optical engine and waveguides to actually project virtual content directly into the world around you. And what's different to some of the other devices out there is um, this is a pair of see-through glasses. So you're actually seeing the real world directly. We're not putting the real world behind um, a video feed or anything like this, uh, as you would see in, in VR. This is the first time since 2021 that Snap has released a pair of spectacles, and they're still not aimed at all of us, but a small run is being made for its developers. You know, at Snap, we're all about bringing people together, close friends, and, and we see um, an opportunity on the um, kind of computing side. You know, if you look at today, everyone's staring down sort of at their phones. Uh, we would actually like to free people from these kind of small screens that they're looking um, down on and actually have um, people looking out at the world. So now we're actually building a full 3D mesh of the world um, around us. As you move around, um, you can have um, you know, very precise interactions with the, the scene around you. Uh, and also we've added the ability for multiple devices to connect because we understand the world around us my glasses can understand where your glasses are and we can have a, a shared experience where we can paint together. He takes me through some of the things that the spectacles can currently do, such as parts of the tutorial to get me off the ground. It's become a big jellyfish on the screen and I can shrink it back down to a teeny tiny one. Boom. There we go. And then it's telling me to pick up my hand and I can see the little menu button pop up. Um, and then when you turn it over, it brings the main settings up. Playing with this very Pokemon-like creature. And then over on the seat over here. And uh, onto your head. There we go. And your shoulder. Very sweet, it sort of just, just sits hanging in, <laughs> hanging in the air over you. And even getting a bit of exercise. See, this definitely is the first, first step. I think we still need to miniaturise. Um, and the other thing, um, we need to build that adoption. Yeah. Adoption is something that is not something you can just have overnight. And this is why we have our developers. They're giving us very, um, uh, very good feedback on you know, how do we make the device better for the experiences they want to, to build. And we hope that over time we can shrink these down, but we can also build the software stack to be exactly uh, what our developers want to create amazing experiences for end users there. But I think, yeah, it will still be a few years um, before they're, they're kind of shrunk down. The tech is awesome to try, but there are still major drawbacks. These spectacles are heavy, uncomfortable, and the battery life's a mere 45 minutes. There's a long way to go until we see these on the street. And the question for Snap is, will this massive investment pay off?